Hi everyone. Uh, tonight with the Gauntlet, uh, we are playing Gun and Slinger by Nevin Holmes, uh, part of our Wet Weird West series. Um, my name is Donna, and my pronouns are he, him, and I'm going to be GMing or maestroing uh, this game. Um, we haven't done world creation, we're going to do that in a moment, uh, and we're going to do character creation after that. But in the meantime, let's get introductions from our players. Uh, and I guess we can do left to right because uh, gun and slinger, right? Uh, so Rich. Hey Rich, I use the he him pronouns and I will be playing a gun. For shooting. Hey, I'm Sabine, I use any pronouns and I'm playing the slinger. Awesome. So, uh, we've kind of intro the uh, the basic premise of the world um, a little bit. You know, uh, we have this kind of post-apocalyptic world, which has been uh, you know affected by the twist, uh, and I guess the twist is the kind of omnipresent world-changing force, which is the big bad. Um, so let's let's start with our world building. Uh, and there's a bunch of questions on our world tab for the table. Um, I guess, you know, I don't wanna answer many of these, but I can definitely jump in because it does say for the table. Um, so the first one here is the twist continues to be an omnipresent, slow world changing force. Besides the night beasts, which I guess are the horrors that come out at night, what new and hostile force was introduced in the last decade? And how has daily life changed? Sorry. Sabine, you uh <laughs> I'm just bursting out. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I have an idea. It's sand. There are sandstorms arising from, from the ground, even when it's wet and even when there is not exactly a lot of sand around there, but there are sandstorms. They will abrade everything in their path, uh, and people will have to pe people have turned to living mostly underground to be safe from these things. You can't live underground. You try to get into a cave or something because uh, if the usual houses that people had before the twist, they will be eaten by these sandstorms and a lot of them have. So there are a lot of houses standing around or skeletons of houses really, where you can see holes in them because they've been abraded, but not, not evenly. So there are, yeah. I think that's... Okay, awesome. Um, what do you want to add anything to that, Rich? I kind of like for there to be like Ed, um, just what if there's a season when you can come above ground? Because like, I don't want everybody eating a bunch of mushrooms and like I've played in some underground games and I'm like, I don't understand the ecology of this. So could, could there be a growing season when that abates a bit? Uh, and then you are always, but you're always looking off to the horizon, right? Worried about it. But otherwise, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So there's like in, in your summer of the year, there's can be like a growing sense of normality, but then it's kind of a winter is coming thing. You know, we gotta we gotta prepare, and then there's like a maybe a, a switch over to like sudden terror as the as the the twisters, let's call them twisters, right, <laughs> come in. Uh, okay, great. Um, in the last few years, the ancient force magic has resurfaced. In what form is it common? How is it used? Which I have to think you're aching for this to be some kind of card based magic, right? Some sure. Some, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's as, as a callback. Yeah. A card based magic. Um, I guess playing cards or tarot cards. Yeah. <laughs> And arise the rise of the arcanists. Uh, so is this something like a magic that is kind of everyday, or is it still, you know, like a um, 
Oh, it's these, it's like these it's like wizards in D and D. I think it's super rare. Okay, yeah. Like people just don't have the knack for it. Yeah, but maybe people do. And still, there's corruption like, involved, evidently. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so it's, it's a dangerous it's a, thing. Yeah, the people who do who might have the talent are like, man, it's okay. I'll just uh, I'll just not do that. Okay, but say people might still have like decks of playing cards and might you know think about things in a magical sense where cards are involved use them for uh, like tarot readings and that kind of stuff i think sometimes when even somebody who's not really talented or something and they use the cards and certain combinations come up and boom suddenly some magic happens it's not that's why we really have to be careful about playing cards because you never know right you never know when something is suddenly you got i don't know a three-headed monkey in the room who wants to eat your face? It sounds like there could be an alchemist panic, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Except it's not the arc. Like I don't I mean, see it, that it's... being a hunt down arcanist. It's just arcanists have figured out how to make it work yeah, for yeah, somebody right. else just being put upon, right? Although yeah. I'm sure there are some who say this didn't happen until you showed up and you know, cart horse. Egg yeah. and chicken. Okay. Um, so uh, the next question is the twist recently destroyed the region's largest city. What was its name, purpose, and what changed? Um, th- do we think this was destroyed like in like a giant twister, or was this some other? means of destruction. You can't say that we've got a twister threat and not have the twister destroy a yeah, city, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. So I so, think the city was called yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I think the city was called Hello. It was um you started out as a pilgrimage site back when people were doing lots of pilgrimages and grew to an unfettered city like cities do, right? We were pilgrimage side once, but not everybody is pilgrimaging there and people are living there and having business there and doing stuff there and living their lives there basically. But it started out as a pilgrimage side and that's why it's called Halo, why it was called Halo. When you say, are you saying Halo or Hello? Hello, Hello, like, uh, like uh, the Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Oh, okay. Wow, that was that was not on my top two. Okay, of what I thought you were saying. All right. No, it wasn't Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask her to Halo or Hello if I have to, <laughs> but Hello I like. Hey, cool. And what um, was a, um, a side of pilgrimage? What, was there something specific that people journeyed to, to see or to pray to, or what was the what was the deal? Maybe uh, they had a beach. Yeah, right. They could have had a beach, and uh, the the wind blew the dunes into fantastic shapes i like water i'm not so big on beach Beach doesn't feel very western to me i guess oh right you're right you're right it should be Um, maybe then it's something like the um they're in in arizona they have these canyons that are really amazingly shaped uh rock thingies rock formations shaped by wind know what i mean yeah something like that okay yeah so the 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 town of Hallow had built up around these. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean that that brings it very nicely to the next question, which is what major landmarks remain? Uh, what's their importance? Uh, we all create one. I don't know if this is um, particularly in the larger city or just generally speaking. The way it's phrased here makes me think it's near the largest city, but we can we can branch out a little bit, I guess. Um, well, are we using the, the city from from Slayers Dust, whatever it was yeah, called? Yeah, Dust Bowl was the city, but it, but we can we could have that as well as Halo, right? Well, I think Halo's Halo, 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 Halo. 
mm-hmm. is destroyed, right? So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Canyon. That's what I was thinking about. Um, so, so what do you think, Rich? Do you want to say Dust Bowl remains, even if it's like kind of been rebuilt to, to withstand the the twisters or has mm-hmm. gone underground? Yeah, I think Dust Bowl remains would be fun. As even even though this is a very different world because there were no twisters and slayers, they, just a, an illusion because you wanted to have some connected and I like connection. So well, well yeah, you know, Dust Bowl exists. Obviously, that was before the twist, Rich. Right? You yeah. know exactly. Yeah, it makes that perfect sense. Exactly why. Perfect <laughs> sense now. The so, the thank you. the wiki based on the series will you know uh, iron out all all the kinks here. Thank God. <laughs> um, Sabine, any any other major landmark you want to kind of call out as being important? I think the Hello Canyons are still there. They look different now, but they are still there. And they look different after each winter. So people say that has meaning and there are omens being made by the twisters. And if you really look at these these. Formations you can spot the twist ones just to yeah that these people are probably not all that same. Um that's cool. I mean, do do people like say that it's like something that can protect you or something that's slowly being corrupted by the twist? Like, or is there just different people who think different things? Different people think different things. Okay, great. Um, oh, you've got a gauntlet uh, sweater thingy, Rich. I just see that now. Yeah, Ooh. I've had it for a really long time. It is so threadbare. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but oh, yeah. it's, it's ruined. I just keep wearing it because it's warm, but it's falling apart on me. Oh, yeah. I've got, I've got this one. <laughs> so. You see, now I feel really, you know, shabby in my, my polo. <laughs> Don't feel shabby. You just don't fit in. I'm going to change to my closest geek t-shirt in the next break. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Sorry, One speaking of which, Rich, are you, of us. Are you uh, doing your pickup in 10 or 15 minutes? I am. Thank you for the okay. gentle reminder. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so uh, the gun is magical, sentient, and speaks. How common is this? Uh, can objects besides guns speak? How do people typically react? Um... Well, we've got card games that could produce magic. So objects speaking maybe are something you'd read about in a Tim Penny novel, but maybe not expect to actually happen. Maybe. So, like, it's not unheard of, but you may think, oh, well, well, werewolves don't really exist. But then if you saw a werewolf, you'd be like, that is a person who changed into a wolf and or a wolf who changed into a person. Therefore, it is a werewolf. Does that, yeah, yeah. Does that work for People you, Sabine, would... or would you like it more common? Sabine, can you hear Didn't... me? Yeah, I can okay. hear you. I was just confused about the last part with the werewolf. What, what um, am I cutting was... out for you or? No, no, I just, my, my attention was on typing and then I was typing and then I was listening and then my brain got confused, I'm sorry. Okay. What I was saying to try to draw a comparison to mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. guns, talking guns is the idea that I wouldn't expect to see, I, Rich, would never expect mm. to see a werewolf happen. But it's, a, it's in enough of the popular media that if I saw a wolf turn into a person, I'd be like, oh, shit, that is a werewolf. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. To explain that in Timpany novels and uh, mm-hmm. haunts and uh, other stories, it's a thing that people talk about. But yeah, it's just to keep kids scared, I guess. Is it just guns who started talking or other weapons or 
items as well. Oh no, it's the West. What else has as much iconic power as a gun? I'm not saying no. I'm just wondering. Like, I don't want it to be a fucking bucket. That that make me feel kind of lame. Yeah, you're right. There's a hole in this bucket. It's not a yeah. hole. I just needed to breathe. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess in dust, right? We we had the forge that was creating the six shooters, which were definitely magical. Oh yeah. And, true. and then we we also had the the, the sharpshooters rifle, right? But that was mm-hmm. a, a different kind of a thing. Uh, so, and there was an eye, right? There was the dead eyes eye as well that was kind of techno magical. So, uh, but the guns was like the hard baked thing, right? That was okay. creating the forge, and they were like a known thing, although there weren't many of them. So, yeah, it could be there like super rare, be, but yeah, there there could be older weapons before the the time of the gun, perhaps. But uh, uh, magic talking swords or some crazy. Um, so, like, do people react like, "Wow, I need to go see that because there's a talking gun on the high street," or is it like fear, or you know, what's the what's the gamut of reactions here? What do you think, Sabine? Because you're technically the person who's going to have to deal with it the most. I I won't. People, be, I don't talk that much, so they might just assume it's me talking or that I'm a ventriloquist or something. I think a lot of people think that, actually, that it's just a sort of a, a cheated, cheater's trick, a trickster a con man con man's trick maybe um i i think they're i mean if i thought how would i feel if i saw a werewolf i'd be like cautious also kind of fascinated so and of course it could vary from person to person maybe there are some people who are really into this and other people would say oh this is the this is a, this is the twister that did this that has to go right mm. but i don't think there is a common clear opinion among the populace what to do with that because it's so rare does that make sense yeah cool okay uh, and that's, I think the next question digs a little bit deeper into um, how people react to objects that may or may not be magical. Um, people occasionally find simple stone relics, orbs, spheres, and pyramids with glowing inlays. Uh, how do they feel and what is their theoretical purpose? Mm. I am not sure about that one. No, me neither. I have a, an, um, an image in my head of these petroglyphs, that petroglyphs you find in, I think uh, it's Arizona again, caves, but uh, that's basic what I have. I mean, they're stones. Stones feel, maybe they, they kind of feel like they're vibrating, right? When you, when you have them in your hand or touch them, feels like they're softly vibrating it's not something you can hear or but you have if, if they're touching your skin you will feel it it's not even as strong as a phone vibrating or something but you can you can feel it if you pay attention uh yeah cool um what rich what do you think of the, uh these stone relics theoretical purpose would be hmm. think the theor- theoretical purpose could be communication that mm-hmm. sometimes if you hold one in the right light of day you get visions of other places okay but people don't know how to make it work yeah 
okay, awesome. That's really neat. Okay, let's, let's jump on to our Slinger questions. Um, in the last few months, something awoke and now hunts you. What? Have you seen it? Are you aware? Have you frozen to me? Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Sabine? That is bad, but I have been cutting out anyway. So um, I think it's something that is made, something vaguely man like shape made of sort of sand and shadows and silence. And it wears a hat. That is for sure. It wears a hat. Or, or it looks like a silhouette of a thing that wears a hat. What it is, I have, I. Am I aware? I'm aware I, that something might be following me, but I'm not sure if it's real even or if it's just paranoia. Is there something there? I feel like there is something there, but I don't, I'm not entirely sure if that's, if that's true. I need to change my name here. It's the wrong character. made of silence that sounds so awesome i want to find out what that means <laughs> uh okay um i want i want to switch over to to rich and back and forth for these just so that we're not uh monopolizing um rich you weren't always i, I see you've already filled the same are you happy with that answer do you want to read it out yeah, I'll read it fish. out. Okay. Uh, used to, yeah, I think so. I tried to keep it. Like, there were other things where I thought about answers, but I wanted to hear everything else going on. But this wouldn't work. So I used to be a prospector, uh, panning streams and creeks outside a dust bowl, uh, caught cholera and felt my body dying when I woke in the gun. I was the gun. Um, and how long ago do you think this was? Hmm. I've got three sessions. <laughs> uh, so I think I think it was a while. I think it was before the uh, the the twisters. Okay, so like ten years plus ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Sabine, the twist marked and changed you. How are you marked? Uh, what new ability does it grant? How must you care for it? I think what it did, how it marked me, it's, hmm. I think I don't sleep at all. I don't have to, I don't feel tired, but I don't sleep. I don't, sometimes I, I kind of have these sort of dreams intrude when I'm awake, it's not great, but they always go away after a bit. So it's fine, basically. I know when I have to sit still and just wait for, for stuff to not be there. That they are, and that I can go on. It doesn't last long, so. But I kind of miss waking up, right? After a good night's sleep, I feel like, oh, everything is, is you're rest, we're really rested. I never feel rested anymore. That means I can't get a ambush to my sleep, so. There's that. And the gun doesn't sleep as well, so we're good. Okay. Um, do you think that this kind of mark is evident to anyone 
you know, that you're not sleeping and that your kind of thoughts are invaded this way? I think there's something weird about my eyes. They seem like bottomless pits if you look too close. But that, that's maybe why I'm wearing the hat like this a lot, so people can see the eyes. Okay, cool. Uh, Rich, you, you may be a weapon, but you're more than that. Besides violence, what else are you a tool for? Well, of course, being a prospector, I, I know what's worthwhile and what's not, but that's not super helpful. I am also a diviner find water so 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 gold i guess or silver and water yeah that that does seem helpful <laughs> um uh, so then you have a trinket from the home that you no longer have uh what is it what does it do and what does that mean to you? Hmm. Trinket. I'm. I'm. In, first thing popped into my head was a pocket watch. What does it do? Well, nothing much because it's broken. But um, sometimes I can just, you know, swing it like a pendulum and then lull myself into. Snapping out of the visions that occasionally plague me. That's what it's do it does right now. Keeps me focused on the here and now. What it means to me is that it was a gift from someone I cared about. Okay, cool. Um, and Rich, you're directly connected to magic's global flowing lines and fields. How can only you use them to affect your surroundings? I don't even really understand that question a whole lot, but uh, so I guess imagine like... imagine like ley lines or whatever, where the magic okay. of, of the world is flowing through. Um, I guess you can sense and affect them. Uh, let's, let's say that I can draw the, and I don't, again, I don't know mechanically if this is possible, but I could draw if I can sense where the ley lines are, I can draw power for them, from them and over time make bullets for myself. Yes. I need to go. Okay. Yeah. So right. uh, thanks, Rich. Uh, we will okay. see you in about 15 or 20. Okay. See you okay. guys in a few. Um, so, Sabine, uh, I think we can take a break for till the hour, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, my hair is even worse now. <laughs> the, the hat. The curse of the hat. Yeah, the curse of the hat. Okay. okay. Um... So I can't remember, Rich, do you, uh, um, the magic ley lines, I think you were, you described how you could kind of uh, sense them. Yeah, I could sense them. And if, if we were near and, them for long enough, I could make more bullets. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, so Sabine, last question. What are you seeking and what do you fear? What am I seeking? Better internet, but uh, <laughs> um, what am I seeking? Hmm. What I'm seeking is a memory. There is, there is a. I, I don't know. There is this kind of song in my head, and I know it's important, kind of, but I can. I don't know what the words are, where it's coming from, and I really need to know what this song is about and who, who 
I don't know, maybe someone to sing it for me, I guess. Um, is it the kind of song that you can kind of hum or is it something that's only in your head and you can't quite get it out? It's in my head, I hum and then I notice that I'm humming and that's when I lose it. Right, I can hum it perfectly when I'm not thinking what about what I'm doing, but the second I I think, think, hey, this is it. This I've got it. No, mm -mm. this is the wrong note. Mm. I don't know where it's how it's going. Yeah, um, and what do I fear? I feel that this is all there is. That there is no purpose. That's what I fear. That we're just just shooting into the twister for nothing basically yeah i feel nihilism i don't like that i want there to be a purpose or something to make sense of things oh gosh i'm romantic <laughs> um well for for rich then what do you want more than anything else and what do you fear I think what I want more than anything else is to feel the wind, feel, touch someone else's skin, the taste of a good whiskey, do human things. I don't think what I fear is that I can't, can't die, that, that I'm stuck in this like a prison forever. Okay. Sorry. All of the nightmare fuel <laughs> in this last set of questions. Okay. So. I guess let's go to the pair of you um, for the gun and the slinger. Where was the gun found? How long have you wandered together? So I think Rich, you had written or you answered previously that you had, you know, your your human self had died at a creek. Mm -hmm. I Outside think. of Dust Bowl. Outside of Dust Bowl, yeah. Um, although. Does yeah, maybe I'm reading too much into that. You caught cholera and you fit and you died. Yep. So, by the way, did a brief read of cholera. That'll kill you in a day. So it's a lovely stuff, really. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, Sabine, where 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 did you find the gun? think that was at the South Saint Creek, right, where the prospector sure. died. Um, maybe I was uh, camping, recovering from something, maybe I had a run-in with a beastie or a, another human, it's not so very nice, or I was not so very nice, who knows. And uh, when I was there and I was a bit feverish, and the dreams were coming on, and I, that's when I found you. I thought you were a dream at first. Maybe okay. I am. Yeah, maybe you are. So, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Oh, maybe that's what I fear more than purposelessness, that I'm losing my mind. But all of this is just in my head. I mean, people think you're a ventriloquist because obviously that gun couldn't be talking, right? <laughs> and how long have you had the gun? Do you think a long time or just briefly? Whatever you, whatever you like, I am open.
think it's been, let's say, a while, because it feels like it's been a while, but to put, I don't know, maybe not that long, but it feels like we've been together for a while. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. And like, I guess in that kind of fugue state of mm -hmm. constant waking, you know, what does, mm -hmm. what does time even mean, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We may have said that ourselves over the last couple of years. Uh, okay, uh, what do you two disagree about? I like shooting people. Do you, do you mind doing that? I mean, some people, they deserve shooting. Some others don't. There's a lot more that deserve it than you think. So, <sighs> yeah, but maybe I deserve it, so. Can't shoot, yeah. So yeah. What, one of the rules in the game, right, is that... The, um, the gun cannot be fired unless both the gun and the slinger agree, right? Uh, so has there been like moments in the in the past uh, where you know you've really wanted to fire, but the slinger hasn't pulled a trigger, or or vice versa? I've never not wanted to fire. <laughs> What? Sorry, I didn't. That was. I've never fast. not wanted to fire. I need to learn some self control, my friend. Yeah. So, so what? What does that like moment feel like when, like, the gun is pointed but not the the, the trigger isn't pulled? <laughs> You just think about that question a little bit. <laughs> I think I think you'll get your own answer, friend. You won't be too far off. So, I mean, you resent your slinger? Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm? I hearing? resent when my slinger won't fire me when it, a person needs killing. We're the exterminators of the world, and these people are pests. Put here for a purpose. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the right purpose to just run around killing people. We can yeah, kill monsters. Monsters and people, samey same. We disagree about a lot, I think. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I guess we'll have to uh, delve into this feeling a bit more. Um, so the final question, how does sharing each other's thoughts feel? That's interesting. So we converse silently. We share each other's thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I think I kind of like it because sometimes I can feel what I'm looking at the picture that you, you stuck in instead of he, him. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, yeah I, I mean, a gunsling gunslinger is a he him. So it's, it so I can, seems I like can, it. sometimes I can feel what he feels, and it's it's not as good as I remember it, mm -hmm. but it's a fair sight better than nothing. I think my name is Clock. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. So, so how does how does it feel for for clock in in that case to share thoughts with August? He also, I think, he kind of likes it because it's a lonely life wandering around here, and it feels oddly. August is his companion, right? He's there to say things, right? 
it's like like it's not it's not that lonely to be out here and not sleep because I don't think August sleeps. No. Yeah, see, so it's it's kind of like it's it's comforting in a way. I'm not always not always quite. I don't always quite know how I actually feel about this, but or how I should feel about this. Yeah, I'm overthinking stuff again, but uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's uh, comforting on a very visceral level, very subconscious level. I don't know. Because all the disagreements we have, I trust them. So, with all that said, uh, we have some character generation, uh, name and pronouns. Uh, so they're you know, obviously it's different for for the gun and the slinger. Um, for your, uh, I guess there's two, three main things to look at. One is. Um, the gun has a rune on your barrel, and the slinger has an ancient word etched in his mind. Um, and these are um, really broad and really purposefully badly defined. So they're, you know, if they fit, they fit. Um, the rune on the gun is. Uh, magical and doesn't derive from the twist, but the uh, the word, the ancient words in the slinger's mind are maybe not deriving from the twist, but they are powered by the twist. So whenever you use them, you are gaining one twist. If you fill up your twist twist boxes, all of them at least, you are you're done for. Um, Damn. Yeah, there's ways to get rid of twist, right? but uh, we'll worry about that when it happens. Um, the stats uh, are again pretty broad. Uh, you have different stats each of each of you, and you assign a two, a one, a zero to the three of them. Um, I think if you hover over it, there's a little uh, comment that gives you some kind of questions, but you know, they, they're vague and all encompassing and kind of groovy. I'm especially fond of just a little bit mean. <laughs> uh, and I've been a wreck. <laughs> so there is that. Um, and then, uh, sorry, the uh, Slinger has an extra sense uh, that others don't have. Uh, they're kind of pretty, pretty well defined, but I guess we'll we'll see. Uh, and then you have ability slash moves, which are one extra uh, ace up your sleeve, if we can use the terminology. Um, and those are pretty pretty awesome. Um, so take a look. Uh, I think everything else is just stuff that will happen in play. So I don't think there's any choice involved on that. So let me know when you're all done. So the um, the ability slash moves you you picked are I mean, mechanically very similar. You're like gonna draw a card off, off the deck 
off the top of the deck and that's how many seconds or minutes depending on what it is uh, it'll have an effect you know seconds and minutes what does that mean in theater of mind i guess it'll last an appropriate amount of time right um Yep. Yet again, a game that's mechanizes something that I'm like, how do you, uh, why, why do we need? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not quite sure what in in combat like the difference between three seconds and seven seconds is, but we will we will see. Um, maybe there's a deep uh, meta mechanic here where you get to like. Bring stuff through the deck and, and, and card count and stuff like this. I don't know. Okay, so um, let's explain a little bit more on the uh, below this on the character sheet. Um, there's harm, which is really straightforward. Um, you have like three sc scrapes that you can get into, uh, and then when you go past that, you get major injuries. If you get past two major injuries, you die. Uh, but you can come back, right? There's no problem with that. Um, the strength... we're both inside the gun. <laughs> it gets crowded in there after after a few slingers, right? I'll give you a chamber. Um, the the gun has a special ability called Blink, which allows them to teleport um, uh, in distance of feet. Um, and then it has strength, which is basically how awesome its magic is. Uh, it's gonna, you, you see further up in the character sheet, there's um, a score called connection, which is like your fuel for using magic. Um, shape shifting, which I don't know, we might mess with that. Uh, it's an, an optional rule. If you wanna change it to a different kind of a gun, or I don't know. Uh, and then lastly on the uh, slinger is the twist. So, uh, you know, as you use your, your magic, let's call it, uh, as you use your moves and as you use your word, you gain twist. Um, if you get to five, you're done. You are permanently twisted. Um, but you can get rid of it by resting or performing selfless acts or, you know, being a good person. Uh, which I guess we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then at the very bottom, there's a section called braids and advancement. Braids are basically like XP. You get XP for failing checks and you get XP at the end of a session for answering a bunch of questions, which are kind of awesome questions. Did you barely make it out alive? Did your legend grow? Did you create avoidable trouble for yourself? And did you learn the world's deeper secrets? And then you spend those to get stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so I think we're done. Um, I guess we don't need to answer the form question, Rich, for August because we have a good picture. So I guess it's just a six shooter, right? Yeah, I was really confused by the form thing when you got a picture, but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess I'm I'm maybe wondering about the the like runes that I can see on the handle and like the blue glowing glowing things. Um, but those elements that you're interested in, kind of seeing was addressed in the fiction or that's just like this is the cool picture of the gun i found the, the details technically it's a cool picture of the gun i found but uh, yeah we could try to work that into this okay awesome so um there's kind of one last thing which is very meta uh, for the game before we jump in and that is we should collectively discuss uh, the focus. So it's like a picture that says, do you wish to defeat the thing that hunts, uh, cure the twist, restore the gun's original body? Uh, you know, do we want to like resolve the kind of tension, uh, the disagreements between the gun and the slinger? You know, what, what do we think we want to have the goal for our, our three session run?
I mean, if there's a thing that hunts me, I think I might want to see it at least at some point. It doesn't need to be the focus though. I, I'm pretty open about that. That sounds interesting, but it's very reactive. Mm -hmm. I kind of like for us to be proactively trying to accomplish a thing as well. Mm -hmm. I like that. Puts everything on Donna's shoulders, and I think we can be heading towards a thing. Could there be someone that maybe there's uh, some kind of twist omancer? we've heard about that we're hunting for? Yeah, I mean, I'm still looking for that effing song in my head, right? Yeah. So maybe that, that maybe we've heard about someone, maybe a Twistomancer, but maybe also be the reason why everything is happening in this world. I don't know, hard to say. They can summon them, they can not summon them. So, I mean, probably the twist that got you locked into the gun at some point because I don't think that happened before. So, it would find that maybe you can have your body back or have another body or at least another be body able to. Sounds good. Or at least be able to, I don't know, leave the gun at one point or another. Yeah. Okay. Sounds sounds good to me. So maybe we'll call in the sorcerer or something like that. Yeah. I think sorcerer looks sounds more westerny than wizard, but I might be wrong. I mean, you know, twistomancer is maybe the term you use. <laughs> You know, when no one else is listening, but the sorcerer may be the term that other people might might tell tales about. <laughs> sorcerer it does have a certain ring to it, but twist yeah, answers yeah. what's stuck in my head. <laughs> no, it's stuck in mine too. Yeah, it does that. Mm. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I think um we can jump into things. Um, yeah, so just let me have a moment. Of course. <laughs> sure. Starting is always a hard part. Well, I think one thing, yeah, one thing I would like to do just to say it, I would like to explore this world or experience what this, this word, twisted word is like, what way it is strange, and maybe not quite right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe we can open with a just get to know our characters kind of scene. You know, maybe uh, I think you have the reason you're out about maybe and, and need to make camp outside of a, a settlement is because you you're following a clue, some some trail or a hint at the sorcerer's true nature, right? Um, so let's come back to that point in a little bit. But for now, um, Clock, why don't you, why don't you describe like your camping site, where you're staying for the night? I'm not muted anymore. Um, I think we're uh, maybe on top of a gully. Um, and we are resting because despite the fact that I don't sleep, I still need to rest occasionally because I can't walk all 
all the time, right? And I need to eat, still need to eat, I need, need to eat even more because I'm not sleeping. And uh, yeah, maybe that's that's what we're we've been doing. We've been finding something to shoot that we can eat that I can eat. Because I like no always likes to shoot. We're not shooting yeah. in person. I know people out here. True. So. Um... So yeah, what um, what did you take down for for clocks dinner August? Uh, it's a bit stringy, but I thought killing a jackalope would be fun. I missed a few times on the deer. But that jackalope went down. Make a good stew. They do. They, they always taste funny, but yeah. And we know, like, you can you can talk, right? And yeah. I think you can communicate with just about anything under the sun, right? Doesn't have to be living, but like, did you did you scare that poor jackalope before you, you know, you fired? Jackalopes are real quick. Clock was getting hungry and his hand was a little twitchy, so I probably shouldn't have, but yeah, I did. And uh, yeah, how'd it make you feel? What's that? surge of panic in the poor little thing before we gunned it down that wasn't too bad uh, and what about clock right you're you can hear each other's thoughts you're probably privy to all of this going on how did that make you feel i mean i can't take can cause searches of fear myself if i want to it's not and we need to eat i need to eat I'm not, I don't mind that. That's just the way it is. I'm, I'm not bothered about it. I'm not loving it, but I'm not bothered about it. Mostly I'm hungry. Okay. So is there a particular reason you picked this spot, the, the, the top of the gully? Um, is this like relatively yeah. safe from the night beasts? Yeah, you can see um, a long ways around from where we are. If somebody comes at us, we will probably notice. Also, I know that the weather is gonna be fine this night, so. Do you have a sense for that, right? Yes. It's a Good sense to have when you have twisters that will scrape the flesh out from your bones. So, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So, uh... <laughs> so, yeah, I guess relatively safe from the twisters here, just by by dint of you knowing they're not coming. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is it that protects you up here from the night beasts? Yeah, uh, basically the fire. They don't like light. And also, Argus is itchy. I know it's me. Sorry, Sabine, can you... Uh, and, yeah. Can you say it again? Yeah. new internet next week so uh, on I think the Wednesday anyway um, yeah. uh, what was I saying yeah I, I said that maybe 
A could be the fire, my bees don't like fire much because of the light. And also if one comes, may, may, maybe it makes August, maybe it will make August happy if we can shoot it. It would make me happier, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, August. I mean, what what did you um, kind of feel about this place that made you kind of think, yeah, this is the place we should lay down for the night? Um, we aren't anywhere near a ley line, but have you ever seen a dried up creek bed? You know, kind of like that. Like I think maybe there was a a vein of it here once. Feels pretty good. Uh, so do we think like the night beasts are kind of repulsed a little bit by this? Yeah, they don't like uh, it much. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um I have an inkling to to make this a test, something that just to, to make sure that you get through the night safe, because the night beasts are not uh, not to be sniffed at. So, yeah, we could. Uh, this could either be like a test that one of you is mostly responsible for, or it could be a uh, kind of a cooperative effort. Uh, what do you think, Rich? Is this something you think August is kind of mostly responsible for in terms of the uh, sentry duty or picking a spot? Or is this like a, a team effort? Well, clock's busy eating, so I'll keep a lookout. OK, so I guess it's time to uh, kick the tires of, of the system. Uh, so for a, uh, so this is a check uh, that we're going to do for one of the players. Uh, the first thing we need to do is that everyone needs to draw a five card hand in the playing cards table. So uh, you can go ahead and do that. I guess Rich, you should go first given that this is your Okay, I've drawn five cards. What kind of cards do we want? So, um, so this, um, I guess high cards are better, but mostly uh, pairs of cards. Uh, so I'm going to draw five cards too. Um, Okay, um, so uh, the, the way this works is you, when I'm calling for a check, um, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. One is I'm going to basically start by calling for a check. Uh, and the next uh, bit is um, whoever is going to be making this check. So in this case, it's, it's Rich is going to look for a card, right? And so you get to ask one of the two of us if we have uh, a certain card. So this is like Go Fish, right? Uh, so you're going to say, have you got a five or whatever it is? And if the person you ask does have a five, they give it to you. Um, and then I will, um, if they don't have a card, you draw from the, you go fish, you draw from the, the deck instead. Uh, and then I will kind of reveal what the difficulty number is. So the difficulty number, I'm going to just play a card out, which is um, the, like the, the number you're looking for. And so if I say it's, it's difficulty seven, you need to give a pair of sevens or a higher. Damn. Now, what happens then is that you can, you can push yourself. So if you have a pair of fives or whatever, you can say, well, uh, two things. You get to add one of your stats to that. So if you have a pair of fives and you have two in that stat, you get bumped up to a seven. 
And then the last thing that can happen is that the other player, so the gun uh, or the slinger, depending on who isn't making the check, can like play a single card to help boost you. So if you play like a single three, you boost them by three, right? So there's definitely uh, uh, a bit of co-op going on even when someone is getting the check. Okay. Oh, okay. So what happens is the first thing you do is you like go you go fishing for an extra card to make a pair if you don't have a pair. Um, uh, so you let's say you have an eight in your hand. Uh, you might say, Sabine, do you have an eight? And if Sabine does have an eight, uh, you get that eight. And if not, you draw a card from the deck and hope you get an eight. Okay. Now, if you don't have a pair, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, the first thing you can do is you can like just fail. You can like take a bargain, which is like a complication. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can just play a single face card or a single ace. Um, so let me, ex I think if we look at, uh, yeah. So in the reference tab in the character keeper, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see face cards. So uh, the face cards are king, queen, jack, and then ace is kind of a special case. A king just succeeds, right? Um, a queen can be paired with any uh, single to produce a pair. So it's kind of like a wild card. And then a jack, you can play to, to draw three extra cards. Mm. Um, with an ace, uh, you basically get a instant success with extra effect. So an ace is always like basically the best card to, to have. Uh, okay. So you win and you get extra insight or you gain and maintain the upper hand or your result um, becomes spectacular. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. So there's a bunch of different ways. And so it, let's say you have none of these options. The first thing is to note that the other player can play a king because you see here a symbol of luck used to exceed any check, including the other players. So like clock can come in to 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 basically succeed um, or to help you succeed. Okay. Uh, and then like if none of those options are, you just take a failure and uh, you get XP. And um, I guess something interesting happens or something more <laughs> bad happens. So. Um, so. Clock, you got any eights? As a matter of fact, I do. I hope you didn't have a pair. Hmm? I'll take that eight from you, please. Yeah, go ahead. Take my eight. So you need to drag it from your hand out onto the tabletop, and then I'll draw it up into my hand, I guess. Or I'll, yeah. I, I don't know what the difficulty is. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, tell you the difficulty, and you know. Maybe I say, oh, now I'm sure he has double eights, or maybe you're sitting on a pair or something else. I don't know. So I am going to set the difficulty here for, I think it's kind of middling. So I'm going to make the difficulty a five. OK. OK. Do you play a card to set the difficulty, or you just say a number? Uh, I both, yeah. And so whenever you play a card, you draw back from the deck. Uh, so I'm, I'm making a difficulty of uh, five. So you got a meet of five, basically, with a pair, but then also yeah. all the other things that we mentioned come into play. So your stats, if you think one of your stats works on this, and then you could also get help from, from clock with a, with a single. So yeah, you get to play a pair if you want. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to just fail. I mean, this is a perception check. If I fail, <laughs> then exciting stuff happens. Uh, I mean, I guess this is not really a perception check. This is a, like a avoid, like have picked the right place and be on the lookout. I guess you know, if you, uh, I guess if you fail, right? Maybe it wasn't. So right? Yeah. All right. You get XP, right? There you go. There's a four. Okay. So, so I would say if you have a pair of fours 
and you and you I want to fail, have, yeah. just don't play anything, right? Because like, I only have abusive. one pair, and I, and that is the eight and the uh, the eight the Sabisa okay. has given me. Yeah, give me so the I'm eight. <laughs> Ah, okay. The eight is on the table, Rich. I can't. I, I don't, don't know what it. else to tell you. I, it's oh, here. okay. I, if it's okay. on the if it's on the table for you, that's it's, the moment uh, where you can do. Are we in the same table? I don't know. I'm just. Uh, do you see the five that Donna has put put out? Nope. A am I in the right the wrong, place? Then you're not in the right place. Is that where you get? Because that's yeah. where I am. So maybe just refresh it. All oh. right, I'll refresh. Maybe it's because I came in earlier. Oh, well, I'm so sorry that I was sitting here getting on you about something. You'd already done it. I played my four. Now I gotta I gotta draw five uh, do I get to read? Um I gotta yes. draw five new cards because it seems like oh, oh okay. well I would have asked for an eight anyway, so okay. that works. <laughs> yeah, so when you play a card, you draw a card. I think. I'm pretty sure. I'll have to, okay. I'll, okay. I'll have to I draw a card. card. Do I do I draw a card as well? Yeah, because well, think, he, he took uh, so when you took I think when you play a card, I think for for the sake of me not having to recheck the rules, I think we'll say yes. You you redraw a card. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Here we go. Why is that Jack sitting out there? Oh, that's I drew that from the as my as my new card, which which is spoiler I'm alert. Scared. Bad because face cards do something different for me. They're like. There you go. Uh, I played it too. Nice it five. I'll take an XP. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So mark a braid um, and, and store it up for yourselves. Okay. So where are um, the braids at? Do we? Uh, oh, we both get the XP. That I prefer. That I'm really happy about that. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's a shared. Okay. As far as I can see, it's a shared. Um, That's wonderful. Cool. I will have to double check what happens when you spend it, though. Uh, good stuff it's xp <laughs> it's xp okay cool so uh so what does this look I'm like a here? shotgun wait sorry. <laughs> uh what what does this look like in terms of the slow approach of the night beasts uh yeah i was the one keeping an eye out i think clock's busy eating the marrow out of the bones and augies probably just thinking about the stars or maybe just riding clock's pleasure at eating the jackalope and when the night beasts start creeping closer and this creek and, bed, the yeah. dried out creek bed wasn't wasn't as much man as i thought it would be I mean, uh, those gulches are dangerous places, as we know from dust, right? Indeed, we do. Uh, so, clock. What do you? What kind of beast do you see, like slowly coming to the the circle of of the light from the fire as you're, you know, chomping into that jackalope leg? I think as well as the jackalope is kind of a chimera. So it's uh, parts of it look like it's come from a coyote. Other parts look like they came from some sort of mountain cat. And at least one part of it looks like it came from, I don't know, some mining equipment. So is this yeah, the, so, so you're describing the night beast or the, the jackalope? That, yeah. Okay. The night beast, the night beast. That okay. is the night beast. It has like a like basic shape of a coyote, maybe, but uh, added in some extra claws and muscles from the mountain cat, and then it has a pickaxe uh, on its head, right, for hitting, like like a beak or something. Okay, yeah. Um, so I think. Um... You know, it doesn't it doesn't rush you it kind of withdraws a little bit from the fire uh, till maybe you can just see the glint of its eyes out there um and then it kind of speaks in this strange guttural voice that maybe sounds like the echoes in the canyons 
um, and it whispers, where are you off to, Clark? I slowly lower the spoon, unhurriedly lower the spoon into the bowl. Stand up, um, reach for Augie and say none of your damn business. So, so here's a question maybe of, of what's going through your heads, right? Um, what is it that you heard that sent you out here on the sorcerer's trail? Sorry, did, did you ask Augie that question? Yeah, let's let's start with August, yeah. Okay. Uh, what, do, what did we hear that sent us out on this trail? We let off saying it was a clue, so that that would be what we heard, but maybe I should add some detail to it. I think we heard that the sorcerer, the sorcerer had a sister that lived out this way, and we're going to pay her a visit and probably shoot her. I'm not just shooting her. I don't even know if just she's... Just shooting her. We have to find the sorcerer. But yeah, we're going to skin with the sorcerer. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> um, well, then, Clark, let's, let's go to you. Um, tell us the, um, the sister's name, why don't you? The sister's name, from what we heard, is Helena. And what what thing about her kind of told you that you know maybe you know her nature could lead to you even saving the sorcerer or turning him from his twisted ways? I think what we heard is that she kept a garden, and that in that garden, nothing the twist hasn't touched it. The twist hasn't touched that garden. It's keeping the garden safe from the twist some way. Okay. Uh, and presumably as this thought drifts through Clark's brain, Augie is a bit like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We, we can just shoot her, right? Uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what what does it feel like when when Clark picks you up and are you sorry, Clark? Are you like pointing Augie out into the darkness at this night beast or or what? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess I am because on night beasts they're not usually great. Um, their conversation turns weird, and then they try to eat you. So yeah, I'm pointing the gun at that beast. Oh, clock are we? And this is in clock's head. Are we just trying to scare it, or you want to rid all the good people of having to deal with this monster? I think you can go to town. Go to town on this one, Augie. Whatever you prefer. All right. I'd like to fire. Go ahead. The blue, the blue gems start to glow brighter, and we see the pickaxe head, the weird bluish reflection off of the metal. And uh, I guess, is this a check or what do we do? Yeah. So, um, unlike the check we just did, uh, uh, when you fire a gun, it's much more cooperative and a little bit. Uh, it's more like blackjack than cofish. So let me let me walk through the rules so we know what we're getting into. Okay. Uh, so this is what's called a blind pay. Uh, so uh, uh, so both of you are gonna take a single from your hand and put it face down in the play area, uh, and then I'm gonna set a difficulty which is gonna be like 14 for easy, 16 for medium, and 18 for hard. And you're gonna to want to 
match or exceed that, but not go above 21. Okay, if you go above 21, you're bust. Right. And then the other wrinkle is that before, I guess before you play that, I'm gonna draw a card from the deck and this is gonna be added to your score. So this is the modifier card. So, um, face cards are worth 10, aces are one or 11 uh, that you determine after the reveal. And the other thing you can do is you can add a relevant stat. Uh, one player can add a relevant stat after the reveal. Okay. Um, so- Can we also subtract the stat? Uh, no, it's add or not add. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, um. Okay. So are you scaring this away or are you just trying to put a bullet in it? I'm shooting it. Okay. Shooting it dead. Shooting it dead. Okay. Um, so let's call this medium difficulty. So you're looking for a 16. Um, I think I have the order right here. I think I uh, just double check the rules. Um, Gosh, I love playing cards that high up. It makes I, I've never honestly liked playing card RPGs until playing cards that I am. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So I have it right. So I set the difficulty. I flip the deck's top card, which is added to whatever you play. And then you play face down single, a face down single from your hand, and then simultaneously flip them. And then we, we check the results. Okay. And which card was it that you drew from the top of the. I have deck? not done that yet because I wanted to double oh, check okay. on, the, on the order. Okay. So let me, I'm going to put these cards that we've already played. Uh, oh, a jack. So that's oh, a 10. Crap. That's adding to your. Okay. So you need to play low, I guess, right? Uh, can we can we can we change <laughs> like change yeah. that? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you get to see okay. this card and then you change mm. your Okay. Uh, and then you decide what you're playing, right? And okay. and for the purpose of this, the jack doesn't the face cards don't do weird yeah, stuff. They or... don't do weird stuff, it's just a um a bonus to you, which is a, a plus ten. Yeah. We're screwed. Are we? Okay. Okay. We're screwed. Trust me when I tell you we are screwed. Then I will try to unscrew you. Oops. Okay. All right. I try my best. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's see him. Flip it. Okay. Flip it. Holy crap. Exactly 21. Woo, you unscrewed us. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> So yes, so I mean this is this is funny, right? Because if you, uh, yeah, I guess it's good. I'm I'm wondering like, is that your lowest possible card, Rich? On that nine, that is that is that is funny. Um, I That's guess why you're I saving the question like jacks and face cards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wow, that is cool. So so yeah, what what does this look like? Uh, let's get a round of descriptions from, let's start with clock. What that looks like is, I think the, the night beast um, scarpers up, right? They are a lot faster than you think, but clock is pretty fast on his feet as well. Um, so he moves a little, not a lot, and he just lets Augie do his firing thing, just pointing and clicking and the magic and the direction and the, the aim comes from the gun itself. Uh, so Augie, what, what does this look like when the, the hammer hits down on that cartridge? Oh, when the hammer hits and I fire that magic bullet, the blue arcs out of it, lighting up the night sky. And we see the weird eyes that were recessed behind the pickaxe head of this thing uh, and it splits the pickaxe like we hear the ting as it splits through but it keeps going and uh yeah it is either hurt or dead 
because Rich doesn't know if these things have hit points. So I, will <laughs> I mean, you you won the conflict, right? So I'm, for for now, against you know a common garden night beast, you know, I'm not keeping track of hit points. You you, you uh, shot it between the eyes. <laughs> we don't track hit points, but we track seconds and feet. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think you know. Uh, it staggers back, and then I think you just hear it lose contact with the top, with the ground at the top of the uh, uh, of the canyon, and then you hear it just fall. Uh, it doesn't seem to hit ground, right? But it just falls, uh, and you hear like a uh, maybe a howl as it hurtles through the air, and then just gone. Blow on the barrel. Blow on the barrel, clock. You know, I like it when you do that. <laughs> I'm... A little bit of smoke kind of trails off. Yeah, I should get a gun, maybe. I don't have a real gun, but I have fake guns. By session three, we'll all be cosplaying. <laughs> Um, I'll have to get a uh, a, jackal a jackalope mask for for the next one. Yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, can we take I'm a bio break. Yeah, maybe? I was just about to say. So, okay. um, do you want five or ten minutes? How do you feel? Five. Okay. Is that okay with you, Rich? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're back. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, after a an encounter like this, is there is there something that Clock and August do? They're like wind down in a way uh, we haven't seen yet. Is there? Do you just go back exactly like you were, um, you know, eating and just dreaming <laughs> about what's going on? Uh, let's start with Clock, maybe. I mean, I'm, I don't mind by just looking at my my clock, but I also might just have, does Augie get a bit more talkative when he's so uh, happy and has shot someone because then just clock would just listen. Yeah, I could see that. Augie gets excited when he, he shoots and kills. And this was evil. And then we both agreed there was no fighting, so... I think when Augie is interested and alert like this, he might he'll often tell stories. He always says it's stuff he read in a book, but Clark probably realizes that some of it's stuff that Augie probably did himself. The, the least exciting ones are the ones that <laughs> probably what Augie did. The more exciting stories are the ones he read ten penny novels. So yeah. He'll narrate a, what he remembers of a story and make up what he doesn't. Yeah, Clark likes that because he doesn't remember a lot about what he did. It's all kind of mashed together. That's what happens when you don't sleep. Your thoughts get a little sticky. But he likes listening to you and he will occasionally give an appreciative grunt, I guess. So is there any... And then at one point... Sorry, Sabine, go ahead. No, go, you go ahead. I was just about to ask, is there, when you tell the story, is there like some kind of moral of the story? Or is there like something that you realize about the story now that you're telling us that you hadn't before? Or is it just like a really straightforward kind of fable? Oh, that's, that's really neat. I think the story is called... Uh... The Two Rivals or Man and Money. And uh, the story is about uh, uh, a person who had an enemy and was poor and he had to make a decision about which was more important, revenge or living a good life. And Augie changes his story, so it's revenge. Okay. 
and then it just kind of ends abruptly. So it's pretty obvious that Augie was making it up and didn't have a good like send off. And so, he felt better. So clock, <laughs> clock. Do you think there's a story you've heard before, and maybe you know the real ending, or is this just the way Augie is sometimes? No, oh, this is just the way Augie is sometimes. It's fine. I don't mind that. That there is no real end point to the story. Uh, I will ask, and uh, after a while of silence, so did he get it? Oh yeah, he killed him dead, and he got his first good sleep in months. Hmm. Yeah. I remember sleep. That was nice. Yeah. Me too. There's other things better than sleep, though. You can still do that. We ought to, we ought to head to town after we kill this sorcerer's sister. We're not killing her. And she lives near town. And we need water anyway. I can find you water. Go to town for other things. You find me water, I have to dig. I go to town, I get water with a bit more taste in it. Oh, I see. Gonna mm. travel because you're lazy. No, Just don't use not. me to dig again. Yeah, but you can't find me the right kind of water, Augie. What? Just because I died of cholera doesn't mean I don't know where good water is. I don't want water to drink, Augie. I want something stronger. Oh. Well, we I definitely got to go to town for that. I can't divine that out here in the mm -hmm. desert. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't. I think we could play a mean game of poker. Win us some good amount of money. Last time. Dollars. Last time we played poker. We shot three people. Yeah. We won too. Yeah. Didn't matter that we won. Everybody was dead. And they ran us out of the saloon. Well, if you just grabbed the money faster, it wouldn't have mattered. I want to stay in the school. <sighs> All right. Anyway, we can do that again. But promise me you're not going to shoot people. We can't shoot people unless we agree on it. Clock, I know. Come on. Yeah. I don't shoot people. You shoot people. I just encourage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you do that. I'm easily encouraged, aren't I? I think we find an accord when it's meant to be found. Mm -hmm. Well, that's changing. We need to get going. All right. So when you say the weather is changing, what what it is, what is it that's coming in? I think I'm muted. Um, it's not a twister. It's just a regular kind of storm with lightning and wind and stuff like that. And anyways, it's a ways away. It might not even be headed our way, but uh, I want to get going. I want to see this sister mm -hmm. in our garden. As untouched by the twist, that could be interesting. Yeah, yeah you're interested in their garden, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Augie, what's what's the road like down to this um, farmhouse? Ain't no single woman, all by herself, should have a road this good. Ain't no pebbles. Straight, no erosion, it's not natural. Uh, 
and um, I think there's like a little stream that runs down alongside the uh, the road. You know, look at, looking like a proper channel that was dug out just for this clear running water. And uh, yeah, I think it, I mean, you can almost taste this, Oggy. This is like good water. Mm. Um, how, how, how does this like make you miss like having a real body, like a real, real, a real lips, real tongue, real, like uh, the way to, that you could taste this and be satisfied by it? Well, it's uh, not that I feel it, but it's already hot this morning. Probably because that wind's coming in. The idea getting down on your knees and just cupping your hands and pulling up a bit of water from that stream. Feel it just dribble down your chin. Cool your lips. It's not really fair. Clock doesn't even appreciate it. I mean, it's not it's not whiskey, therefore it's you know not not what he needs right now. Yeah. Uh, so clock, what what does this farmhouse look like? Obviously, like what we've built up so far is like this in a really nice. Uh, area and there's the garden, but what does the house look like? I think it's a bit hard to see because it's overgrown. It's it's a real house, right? It's not a hut or something, but it's a house. Um, but it's overgrown with plants and they look pretty healthy. They don't look dramatically healthy or weirdly healthy. They just look healthy. They just look like normal plants that have overgrown a house. Never felt the, and you'd never see that anymore because of the twisters, right? They would just usually rip that right off. But here, no, not so much. And the weather and Clark mutters something about it's always sunny here. That's odd. So, yeah, I think like there's maybe ivy, flowering ivy, like growing up the sides of the house as well. Yeah. Uh, and maybe yeah. garden boxes or so, or window boxes or something like that, mm. um, kind of spilling out the other way. Yeah. Um, it's unnatural. It's unnatural. a natural clock. Um, You're going to be killing her in no time. <laughs> Just and I think you hear creaking from the other side of the house. Uh, you know. Uh, metal or wood kind of creaking against each other like someone in a rocking chair yeah like one of those hanging kind of benches uh -huh. right oh okay well then let's announce ourselves is there some sort of gate or something uh i think you probably walked through it you know a mile back or, or oh, okay. you know, like 100 yards back rather oh. um oh wow so yeah, I guess. I mean, what? Do, how do you call on someone who's sitting on a veranda, uh, a hanging bench? Uh, I think like, I think I just make a a wide arc so that she can see me coming, right? I don't get too close, just so she she can see that I'm here. I don't want to call out through the whole garden. That would seem weird. Well, so yeah. Good day, ma'am. Uh, so August, what do you, what, why don't you describe this woman uh, and maybe tell us like what you can sense out of her magic wise. I think she's a bit of a spinster. Maybe she's reached her, her 30s. She's past what? most folk would consider marrying age but she's still fair not a ravishing beauty pretty um, 
strong too. Kind of shoulders made to bear weight. What I sense about her is her fingers, the way that she moves them. It feels like she knows how to pull on magic. I can feel a tug even from here. It's a little scary. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think Clock can feel that trickle of fear. Be careful. Is this, this tug, is that like that she could wield you or affect you in some way that you haven't seen before? Yeah. Maybe. I don't want to find out. Okay. And at your words, you know, uh, she looks over at you clock and puts down her, her cup of tea and uh, kind of says hello. And, and maybe waves you over to have a, a proper chat with her. Yeah, I will walk over to her. Just probably keep my hand away from the gun right now because that can be seen as threatening, even though it's really hard because my hand just wants to be on that gun. Uh, so is this like you can feel Augie's fear and you kind of want to comfort him or you want to comfort yourself or both? Yeah. Both, both, probably both. Want to protect him. So I will tell him that, don't worry. She won't get your hand, her hands on you. Better keep that word. Um, I told I you we were going to have to kill her. <laughs> and there's a, I think there's like a, a, a dog on the porch just laying in the shade. Um, kind of, kind of looks up and wags his tail at clock when you, when you step up onto the boards. I had again and say, Alan, thank you for uh, seeing me. Can I get you uh, something to drink? It's uh, it's pretty sweltering out there, right? It is like that, ma'am. I have a cup of tea if you don't mind. I don't want to be bothered. And. I think like there's a, a little table with a tray and there's a teapot and I think there might be an extra couple of cups. Um, uh, one for you and one for someone else, who knows? Maybe she was expecting two people. Um, so yeah, she, she upturns the cup and, and pours some tea. And I think it's strong, maybe it's been sitting here a while. Um, yeah, I think you might even have the chance of giving yourself some some fresh milk or or even sugar. Don't like either. Just the tea is black enough to eat the spoon. That's pretty right for me. Hmm. So, uh, what uh, what brings you here? Oh man, tongs are wagging and they're saying that you know the sorcerer, you're, sis you're their sister. Is that true? Tongues are wagging. That seems, uh, seem like far too nice a gentleman to 
come out all this way just because tongues were his wagon. Uh, we're looking for, I'm looking for the sorcerer, a question or two. Well, you're wondering if I know him. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, I, th I think this might be a, a social challenge, right? Oh, to, damn it. <laughs> to, to try to get something screwed. Should have shot her. <laughs> Beat off shooting her and or, then her or you can, questions. <laughs> or you can go in Augie's way for sure. No, no, let's let's just try the social way. I'm not good at that, which is probably one of the reasons why we always have to and why it always ends and having to do it Augie's way. Um, yeah. Uh, so let me well, I can can redraw a card, right? Because yeah. I only have four right now. Cool. So, Ooh, that is a good card. Shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have, huh? Mm. That could be. That jack that popped up into my hand. That is so weird. Unless I did a weird mouse click, I didn't mean to. So I can draw back up to five as well. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, what do we think of this? Challenge? Oh, before we go further, I just wanted to say a thing. Uh, I was reading about your hand in the reference and it yeah. said if any point a player's hand contains a pair two cards of the same value it's set face down on the table in front of them so i asked for an eight and now that's down in front of me so yeah um yeah i that's just right. want to mention that yeah it's it seems like um a strange point i guess i would know you have a pair i'm not sure if yeah, we can do it. We can do it. It just seems to be a point that I'm not sure what the significance of is. So, yeah. I think it there. gives you three feet of extra running room <laughs> per second. Per second. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So, um, okay. So, again, we'll uh, go back to our steps on this. Uh, so, I'm saying this requires a check, meaning that the slinger has got to go fish. So you get to ask either me or Augie if uh, if we have a card. So I have to decide, right? Who yeah, you asking. ask one or other of us. Hey, uh, don't you put out the difficulty first or? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I put out the difficulty oh, okay. after. After, okay. Oh, you do the uh, go fish, okay. then you said a difficult, okay. Okay, I will go fish and I will ask you, Rich, do you have a five? If I had one clock, it would be yours, but I don't. Damn it. Sorry. Okay, so you, Sabine, you grab one from the deck instead. Okay, I grab one from the deck. There you go. Okay. okay. And nice. I get to set the difficulty. Uh -huh. So you are, I guess you're trying to get it's not just like straight answer. It's like a, a useful answer. Or is there a little bit of subtlety here? I, I, okay, so Paul, we know this. Is, well, we know this is the sorcerer's sister. So I don't yeah. know if that's exactly what Clock's asking. Mm -hmm. It's more like, are you going to help us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. sorry, the useful information is like, where is he? And like, is yeah. she willing to share like yeah. exactly what's going on there? So I think this, you know, a gunslinger shows up and asks about your brother. Are you going to tell them? I think it's kind of difficult. So, yeah, I think so. Maybe maybe we can paraphrase this into what would it take for her to tell us? Yeah. I mean, so Something. if you don't hit it, there could be a bargain, right? Mm -hmm. I think is yeah. the way we okay. would play it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and that would be a complication. Or remember, if you don't like the number or you can't match it, you can always play a face card or an ace to, to just win. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to mm -hmm. set this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set this as a seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, then I think at this point, I'd like to have, I, I would like to have a complication to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah, because this uh, just winning, this seems kind of like, uh, meh. Um, but so this just losing is sure. also. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe I should have sure. you know, put out the difficulty you know. and left it hidden oh. and let you like roll the dice to, to take your chances. Oh, you know, you know, I mean, I could do something else, you know what, and I will, I will put out this one. There you go. Oh, okay. Because nice. I have this, I mean, I've got to use it. Ooh, one point. And it seems like more. this is the, Love this it. is, uh, this might be the right place to Perfect. get some something extra to have a success and get something extra it's almost like a complication just less complicated okay or maybe it will be complicated so with an ace mm -hmm. always good to have up your sleeve uh, mm -hmm. ping with one is a major success with an extra effect so you've got three options here i'm not sure if they are in i don't think they are in the reference uh no, so let me, oh, they are. They're in the face card section at the bottom mm -hmm. left. Yeah. Uh, so you've got three options to choose from in terms of what, what extra magic you get. Mm -hmm. Extra inside, upper hand, or improves remarkably, huh? I mean, I kind of like extra insight because we're looking for insight, right? So extra insight seems seems fine. So the question I might pose to the table is what the sorcerer actually can do. Okay. Um, so there? will I, yeah. So will I like, we'll maybe answer the, the kind of baseline success first and mm -hmm. then we'll build on that later. Mm -hmm. That sounds yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, here is a question because, right, this is a, a bit of a turnaround based on our framing, right? That uh, clock, I mean, what is it about you that makes Helena kind of trust you so quickly? I don't think it's the pocket watch. I think she knows. She knows it from wherever. Maybe she knew the person who gave it to me. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, maybe maybe there's a, like a moment where you, you feel like under pressure from her gaze and you kind of maybe reflexively reach for the pocket watch mm -hmm. just to comfort yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because I, think, I can't reach for the gun, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and she like looks very interested and kind of maybe puts out her hand to, to ask if she can take a look. Don't let her touch you. Okay. Don't let her touch you. She's gonna put a. She's gonna put a. I will. Uh, it, it has a. It has a kind of a chain. Wither your dick. She wither your dick. <laughs> Augie, limits. Okay. All right. That's in my head. Oh, okay. That part is off limits. I agree. It should be off limits. So mission it again. But ow. Oh. And I'll take it by the chain and hand it to her so I don't have to touch her. Okay. Because you're being warned off, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so she takes it and she kind of flips it and over. Then, and then, then, and while she's touching it, I will put my hand on the gun and that is more or less a reflex because I, I gave away my pocket watch. I need something. To, I need to touch something. Yeah. So Rich, you know, you can communicate or sorry, August can communicate with objects, right? Like what, and the watch is broken, but like as she turns it over and looks at the, maybe the inscription or whatever's on the base plate and kind of opens it up, you kind of 
I think you can kind of feel the watch coming to life again. And I don't want to ruin any pre-established fiction. Has that watch worked while um, Augie was around, or has it always been broken? Yeah, it looks like it's always, it's always been broken. broken. It's always been broken. Okay. What what does that feel like when you kind of hear this thing that's always been dead to you kind of slowly wake up? I think it's terrifying because she didn't fix it. She just brought it back to life. What does that mean? What could she do to me? Yeah, this is this is bad clock she she brought it back to life clock she can control things she could take me from you clock i know earlier i was saying we ought to shoot her but i really mean it now i think we maybe ought to shoot her she's a threat okay lots of things are threats we don't shoot lots of things she hasn't threatened us yet just because she could doesn't mean she has. When soon as she, as she does threaten us, we'll shoot her. But she hasn't yet. Keeping my eyes on her. Um. So yeah, she looks back up at you, Clark, and um. And she kind of taps it, you know, as if expect, you know, like if if there was temporarily stuck and had just jammed or whatever. Do you want me to take a look at this? I think I might be able to fix it. No, I'm, I don't need it fixed. Oh, okay. So yeah, she. What? What's it gone? Tell me anyway about time. I guess most people like their watches to work. And she's about to like hand it back to you normally, but then she does the same thing with the chain. So you can take it back. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will take it with my left hand because the right one is still on Augie and I'm trying maybe to cover the glowing rooms. So uh, they're not as noticeable. They got he's dimming the runes. He doesn't want to be noticed either. <laughs> and I think she kind of she's like drawn down to that movement or the not movement, right? Of the kind of unnatural restraint that she sees, and she goes, "I guess you don't want me to touch a gun, then." I don't want you to touch the gun, no. The gun doesn't want you to touch it either. I would say the gun doesn't want you to touch it either. So. The sorcerer. I guess we have a sort of agreement. He doesn't interfere with me, and I don't interfere with him. Is there is something you need that we could provide to maybe make you tell us where we need to go. That's not interfering precisely, right? Not precisely. I mean, that, that interpretation would require a level of generosity or blindness that the sorcerer does not have. Mm. Yeah, well. But...
If you don't tell them, I won't tell them. Not a big talker. Huh. Is uh, is Oggy inclined at any stage to to talk, or is he just kind of keep him? Just a gun still? here. Not nothing to see. <laughs> just a gun. No, no one here but us chickens, right? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, okay, so uh, let's I guess she has to point you in the right direction and you have to get some extra insight posing a question to the table. So do you know the water tombs? What are these caverns? Caverns sat in the west of Dust Bowl. I can find them. Well, he does like to find himself there or thereabouts. Sorry, I didn't catch that. My internet's too choppy right now. Uh, she said he he does like to find himself there or thereabouts. Bats like the. No, no, he, he likes to find himself there, you know, in, in the water tombs. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, no, I'm good. I will ask Ogie, do, do you know these water tombs? I have no idea what they are, where they are. I don't know. Would Augie know about the water tombs? Um, a prospector who has an... Uh, um, now a sense for water. Uh, yeah, I think you may have heard of them, but maybe it's not by that name. Uh, but, you know, when you hear it, I think, I guess it makes sense to you that, that she is referring to this other place. Um, so there's a set of caverns that, uh, that nobody knows um, or at least most people say that nobody knows what they were built for, but they do mm -hmm. seem to collect water. Um, and I guess they're underground, so maybe maybe it makes sense that they're the water tombs to her. Yeah, I know where it is. So... Um, Sabine, did you want to pose that question again? Yeah, I will, I will ask her. If we, we will turn to go and I'll turn around and say, is it true they can control the twist? Like the twist itself, not just the emanations. Mm. That goes collaboratively to the table, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, what do you think, Rich? Um, do you think the sorcerer can control the twist or is controlled by the twist or there's some kind of symbiotic thing going on? I think, I think he can control the twists, maybe. Just because he's gone doesn't mean everything's solved and the world's saved, but I kind of like a more direct. The rumors you've heard are terrible and they are true. <laughs> so, so I guess we're saying that um, maybe he's the conduit through which the twist has come to this world. And Ooh, cool. you know, yeah. with him gone, it kind of loses its foothold. Mm -hmm. Does that make does that, mm -hmm. make that sound cool? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Let me write that one down. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe like the, the longer term repercussions of him, like him getting killed means the twist is kind of shunted away, but like the, 
the signs that the twist is left behind will take longer to, to leave or have to be banished individually. But you know, there's there's nothing bringing them into the into the world actively anymore. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. And that would also mean that magic slowly starts to wane again, right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's a there's a downside to that. Um, okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I think her answer is. How would she say that? Yeah, once you rid this world of him, the the twist will be gone. Ask Along what with... comes in, what comes in after that. Well, all the things. Maybe older magic will stay around, but anything that the twist brought will fade. Just so we're clear. Did Augie just ask Clock that question and she answered it, but he didn't, because I'm totally cool if that's the, <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, I was no, assuming no, that August had broken his silence and was asking her directly. No, uh, he, he hadn't, but I love okay. it if she answers yeah. that question. Yeah, me too. Um, okay, okay, cool. Let's let's stay with that. So, so like, I guess, you know, Clock, you're thinking of an answer mm -hmm. and then she just answers straight up and i look at her i'm a little surprised i say ma'am I, I would thank you to stay out of my head please um I, I, i'm not in your head I, he is in my head so okay but august is is very loud not so, not subtle creature. So well, I, and I, I say in Ari's direction, I guess. I think, well, you gotta give her that. It's not untrue. Yeah. Okay. Dangerous. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a good place to wrap. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's. I'll stop recording, and then we'll do mm -hmm. some debrief for stars and wishes. Mm -hmm.